Here we are on a somewhat chilly morning on the Grand Western Canal here in Devon. And at this time of year, there's no finer way to get out there and catch a few predators than with light lure fishing. Instead of sitting around soaking dead baits on the bottom, we're going to be mobile today. We're going to look at the methods that you need for this great ultra mobile way of getting out there and catching a few pike. Let's make a start. This style of fishing is all about mobility and covering water. So in each swim, I'm fan casting, doing around 10 casts in each spot to try and find the fish. And as you can see, it didn't take too long today. Not the biggest pike, hopefully, that we're gonna catch today, but a good bit of fun on this light tackle. But I'm just gonna grab the net. In it goes. Now we've got off to a great start with this fish. Obviously not the biggest, but on a cold winter's day, a great bit of sport right at the start of the day. We're gonna move on now and see if we can get something a little bit bigger. We've already had a couple of casts in this swim and we've been lucky enough to get a small fish already. Now what I'm looking to do is work my way around the swim, generally clockwise, having about six or eight casts in each swim and then moving on. It's all about covering the water and putting it in front of as many pike as I can during these short winter days. Although with fan casting around the swim, I'm always concentrating on targeting particular features where I expect the pike to be waiting in ambush for their prey. Now, in a swim like this, we've got absolutely loads of features and it's important that we cover them all. Above the surface, we can see we've got reeds, we've got overhanging trees, um, as well as the actual undercut banks themselves that get washed away through boat traffic. All of these are really, really important areas when targeting pike. However, it's important not to overlook the features that are under the water as well. And we've got a typical boat channel here, and that means that we've got two slopes, one on each bank, and the pike tend to sit underneath the bank there, waiting for any prey fish to go over the top where they can just dart up and intercept them. So when you're working your way along, doing these type of mobile lure fishing methods, it's really important not just to blindly cast as you work along, but to think like a predator and you'll catch a lot more fish. With the water being so clear today, I am concentrating on quite natural patterns. I've gone for this little white and gold one. The light's coming up a bit now, and I think this glitter pattern will just catch the uh, light quite nicely. So we'll get it out there and see if they uh, take a liking to this one. When we're casting and retrieving lures for pike, it's not just mindlessly winding the handle, it's about working the lure to imitate an injured or wounded prey fish. And on a cold day like today, I'm trying to keep the lure quite near the bottom where I'm expecting the fish to be. I'm making a cast, letting it sink to the bottom, and then winding back quite slowly, trying to keep contact with the bottom, which with the non-stretch braided line, I can feel as it taps along the bottom there. And I'm just putting gentle twitches down the line and impart an action into the lure just with gentle lifts and drops of the rod tip. And what I'm trying to get the lure to do is as well as having that natural wiggling tail action, I want it to keel over onto its side. Now, prey fish naturally don't tend to do that unless they're injured and it's a massive trigger for predators. And the amount of times that the lure gets nailed just as you give it that little twitch is unbelievable. If you want to make the most of your lure fishing, when you're fishing for pike or any other predators, it's really important that you focus on putting as much action into the lures as you can. Oh, we're in again. Now, I just had a feeling that if we covered this swim, maybe with a couple more casts than I normally would, I'd get another fish. And I've just made a nice long cast, which covered both of the drop-offs, and we're in again. Now, 
It's only another little jack, but as you can see from the bend in the rod, if you use the right tackle at this time of year, on a day where many anglers will be struggling to get a bite from anything, there's still some great action to be had. Whether big or small, it's important that we treat them all with respect. Now, I'm going to pop this one gently back. Hopefully it's going to come back when it's a 20 pounder and I'll catch it again. For those of you trying lure fishing for the first time, it can be really confusing with a multitude of lures that are on the market. Today, I'm going to be focusing on six of my personal favourite soft lures and telling you where and when I like to use them for best effect. Firstly, I've got the chatter tail. This particular soft lure has a nice deep body which imitates a lot of prey species in the UK. As well as that, it has this lovely long ripple tail which in the water has a lovely sinuous action which imitates an eel or other small fish. Really, really effective pattern. As with all the soft baits that we're using today, with a single upturned hook, it means that on a cold day like today, I can fish this along the bottom. And this tail will work even at very, very low retrieve speeds, which means I can literally just twitch it back along the bottom, very tempting for a pike or even a perch. 